Let's open up our chapter in the Course in Miracles today to read up on the magnitude of holiness. You still think holiness is difficult because you cannot see how it can be extended to include everyone. And you have learned that it must include everyone to be holy. Concern yourself not with the extension of holiness for the nature of miracles you do not understand. Nor do you do them. It is their extension far beyond the limits you perceive that demonstrates you did not do them. Why should you worry about the miracle extends to all the sonship when you do not understand the miracle itself? One attribute is no more difficult to understand than is the whole. If miracles are at all, their attributes would have to be miraculous. <clears throat> miraculous being, a, being part of them. There is a tendency to fragment and then to be concerned about the truth of just a little of the whole. And this is but a way of avoiding or looking away from the whole to what you think you might be better able to understand. For this is but another way in which you will still try to keep understanding to yourself. A better and far more helpful way to think of miracles is this. You do not understand them either in part or whole, yet you have done them. Therefore, your understanding cannot be necessary. It is still impossible to accomplish what you do not understand. And so there must be something in you that does understand. To you, the miracle cannot seem natural because what you have done to hurt your minds has made them so unnatural that you do not remember what is natural to them. And when you are told about it, you cannot understand it. The recognition of the part as whole and of the whole in every part is perfectly natural. For it is the way God thinks and what is natural to him is natural to you. Holy natural per perception would show you instantly that order of difficulty in miracles is quite impossible, for it involves a contradiction of what miracles mean. And if you could understand their meaning, their attributes could hardly cause your perplexity. You have done miracles, but it is quite apparent that you have not done them alone. You have exceeded whenever you have reached another mind and joined with it. When two minds join as one and share one idea equally, the first link in the awareness of the sonship has been made one. When you have made this joining of the Holy Spirit bids you and have offered it to him to use as he knows it, his natural perception of the gift enables him to understand it and you to use his understanding on your behalf. It is impossible to convince you that of the reality of what has clearly been accomplished through your willingness as long as you believe that you must understand it or else it is not real. You think your lack of understanding is a loss to you and so you are unwilling to believe that what has happened is true. But you can, but you really believe that it is all that has happened even though you do not understand it has not happened. Yet this is your position. You would have perfect faith in the Holy Spirit and in the effects of his teaching if you were not afraid to acknowledge that he taught you. For this acknowledgement means that what has happened you do not understand, but what you are willing to accept it because it has happened. How can faith and reality be yours while you are, you are bent on making it unreal? And are you really safer in maintaining the unreality of what has happened than you would be in joyously accepting it for it is and giving thanks for it? Honor and truth that has been given to you and be glad you do not understand it. Miracles are natural to God and to the one who speaks for him. For his ta task is to translate the miracle into the knowledge which it represents and which is lost to you. Let his understanding of the miracle be enough for you and do not turn away from all the witnesses that he has given you to his reality. No evidence will convince you of the truth of what you do not want. Yet your relationship with him is real and has been demonstrated. Regard this not with fear, but with rejoicing. The one you called upon is with you. Bid him welcome and honor his witnesses who bring you the glad tidings. He has come, it is true, just as you fear that to acknowledge. Him is to deny all that you think you know, but it, it was never true. What gain, what gain is there to you to clinging to it and denying the evidence for truth? For you have come too near to truth to renounce it now, and you will yield to its compelling attraction. You can delay this now, but only a little while. The host of God has called to you, and you have not heard. And you have heard. 
Never again will you be wholly willing to not listen. This is a year of joy in which your listening will increase and peace will grow with its increase. The power of holiness and the weakness of attack have both been brought into awareness. And this has been accomplished in minds firmly convinced that holiness is weakness and attack is power. Should not this be a sufficient miracle to teach you that your teacher is not of you? But remember also that whatever you have listened to, his interpretation and the results have brought you joy. Would you prefer the results of your interpretation? Considering honestly what they have been. God wills you better. Could you not look with greater charity on whom God loves with perfect love? Do not interpret against God's love, for you have many witnesses which speak of it so clearly that only the blind and deaf could fail to see and hear them. This year, determine not to deny what has been given you by God. Awake and share it, for that is the only reason he has called to you. His voice has spoken clearly, and yet you have no so little faith in what you heard because you have preferred to place still greater faith in the disaster you have made. Today, let us resolve together to accept the joyful tidings that disaster is not real and that reality is not disaster. Reality is safe and sure and wholly kind to everyone and everything in a sane mind. There is no greater love than to accept this and be glad, for love asks only that you be happy and will give you everything and makes for happiness. You have neither given any problem to the Holy Spirit he has not solved for you, nor will you ever do so. You have never tried to solve anything yourself and been successful. Is it not time you brought these facts together and made sense of them? This is the year for the application of the ideas which have been given to you. For the ideas are mighty forces to be used and not held idly by. They have already proved their power sufficiently for you to place your faith in them and not in their denial. This year invest in truth and let it work in peace. Have faith in what has faith in you. Think what you have really seen and heard and recognize it. Can you be alone with witnesses like these? 